Hello everyone, welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today we're going to take a look at a video that I pulled off of Van Bay Yawn 2. You can, uh, you can jump the Vans page in the description below of a sovereign citizen who looks like he's being arraigned on perhaps a traffic ticket, a very minor citation, and he turns this uh, routine court transaction into, into contempt of court and him being put in jail for two days. I'm going to break this video down after we watch it. I'm going to point out some of the important legal points that are in it and also just the ridiculousness of a lot of what this guy is saying. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. This is the Common Sense Academy, where we take a look at sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and other people behaving badly. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, uh, comment, and share. Right now I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. When I get to 10,000, YouTube will give me new features and will give me a merchandise shelf that I can put at the bottom of my videos. Uh, so if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. A majority of my viewers aren't subscribed. It's a great way to support the show for free. I, I don't make very much money off of this, uh, and I, this show will always remain free. So please go ahead and subscribe. Um, also sign up for my email list when you sign up free PDF history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement. Now before we watch this video, which is both... Um, entertaining and informative at the same time. Uh, we're all cooped up in our houses due to the coronavirus. Looks like we're going to be this way at least until April 30th. Um, so I'm trying to, you guys all know, I drink, <laughs> I mostly drink Diet Coke and I drink coffee and I drink water. I'm trying to incorporate more water in to my diet and a little, a little less coffee. So everyone, raise your cup, your glass, your drink in the air. If you like black, if you like coffee, get Black Rifle. I'm still drinking coffee. I'm just trying to reduce my intake. Raise your glass in the air. Uh, let's do a same time sip. Let's hope this coronavirus ends soon. We can get back to normal life, um, but let's be safe in the meantime. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Even though water has no taste, what am I talking about? All right, let's watch this. CR five three four one two one. By morning, something morning. All right, on February first of this year, you were arrested and charged with trespassing and resisting arrest. Do you understand the charges? No, I do not understand the charges against me or the nature and cause of the actions against me as well. Okay, so do you need me to read the ticket to you? No. Okay, well, so am I ready to demand for a jury by trial? Uh, denied. Denied? Yeah, okay. under Nevada law, you don't get a jury trial. Right. Does this court intend to try me under a criminal action? Or well, yeah, it's under the Nevada Revised Statutes. This court's not trying. This court is not. Yeah, I mean, it's under the Nevada Revised Statutes. Did you read the ticket? It's um, all there. I just wanted to know if this court was intending to try me under a criminal action or a civil action. It's criminal. Criminal? Yeah. Because the Constitution grants me the right to a trial by jury. No, with all criminal actions. No, no, it does not. They're factors in. Sydney, can you reference the North Las Vegas case that went to the U.S. Supreme Court? Do you guys remember the name of that case? There was a case from this court that went to the U.S. Supreme Court. They said uh, misdemeanors are petty offenses and they're not entitled to a jury trial. Um, Your Honor. So, but anyway, so uh, hold on. I'm, 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 listen, Mr. Cook. What? Blanton. Okay. Uh, today is the initial arraignment. I ask the questions. You don't ask the questions. If you interrupt me in my process of doing the arraignment, I could hold you in contempt and I'll incarcerate you for contempt. Do you understand that? Your Honor, I'm simply trying to grasp the understanding. Yeah, well, it, it, like I said, if you have certain questions about the understanding of the charges, I don't mind reading the charges to you. But I need to make sure that you have a copy of the ticket. I need to make sure that the uh, spelling of your name is correct. That your uh, date of birth of August 31st, 1998, is that correct? That, that was the correct. day I was born. What's that? That was the day I was born. Okay. All right. Okay. And the name spelled correctly is Timothy Cook. Because this is the tribe I come from. My family calls me Timothy. Yeah. That's my 
as a natural person. No, no, no listen, you. listen, we're not going to do this. Okay, you're going to follow my procedures today. Okay. Am I under your jurisdiction? Oh, yes, you are. Is there a signed contract? No, okay. Listen, I told you before, if you interrupt me with these uh, silly questions, I can hold you in contempt up to 25 days in jail. Do you want that? Your Honor, I wish not to do that. I'm simply exercising my rights. No, no, you don't have a right to, to forestall this proceeding today. Your Honor, if I may, no disrespect, it says inside Article 1, Section 3 of the Nevada State Constitution, the right of trial by jury shall be secured to all and remain inviolated okay. forever. All right, officers, we're taking you into custody today. I've already answered your question about the I right to jury trial. Sir, no, I'm just saying. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. I wish not to be here to the United States Constitution for me. So I'm not here to answer these questions. I'm not here to answer these questions. Your Honor, you uphold the Nevada State Constitution because in Article 15, Section 5, it says that. Okay, so we're going to recess court right now. There's no proper due process. No proper due process. No proper due process. That Mr. Cook became disruptive in the court process, the court proceedings. He attempted to take control of the court proceeding. And that he began to resist the uh, bailiffs in the courtroom. They gave warning several times that uh, I'd be asking questions so we can get through the initial arraignment. He refused to cooperate with the court. So, so, whereas in Nevada by Statute 22.030 declares that one can have this committed in immediate view in presence of the court or judge and chambers, <coughs> may be punished summarily, for which an order shall be made deciding the facts that's occurring in such immediate view of presence. Mm -hmm. Judging that the person proceeded against is thereby guilty of contempt, and these punishes they are described in. This has happened on the third day of March, 2020. Individual's name is Timothy Cook. He was a party to the proceedings. Uh, and he was disorderly, contemptuous, and insolvent. He had some sort of behavior towards the judge while he was not going to court and engaged in judicial duties. And he conducted a uh, breach of peace, monstrous conduct. And he became violent in a manner when the bailiffs attempted to put him into custody. Whereas in such conduct would be in the court, the regulatory the authority of the court, he had agreed with the orderly administration of justice. It required immediate vindication by the court to preserve order and respect based upon the findings. Timothy Cook is here by guilty of direct contempt. It is therefore his order, uh, judge, and decree that the, the contender is here by sentenced to the following punishments. Imprisonment for uh, three days. Okay, so Madam Clerk, what we're going to do is we're going to exonerate his bonds today. I'll go ahead and set bail at $10,140. And today is Tuesday, so we're looking at. Now let's go ahead and schedule him for in custody session on Thursday. I mean, he got arrested for resisting arrest. <laughs> I, like I said, I had a, um, he was just fine with me. I had a, a nice normal conversation with him in the city, um, and made an offer, and he said he was going to accept it. Once the offer. Judge, it was trying to answer both counts if he wanted to resolve the case today. Okay. So, and how long was he asked to be It was one day. Okay. So, he's got two days jail with two days credit. He does have one more day to serve on the Fifth Avenue charge. All right, so, all right, how are you going to plead with the charges with credit time served? Um, yeah, maybe you can explain that to me so I have, like, you know what that means. Okay. It's hard to hear it. It's hard to hear it. It's fine. Um, you don't have any classes. There's no suspended. The case is closed. You just, you get out and you move on. Um, move on to life. Okay. Okay, so you so have one more day. I'm oh, sorry. You don't have How is he going to plead with the charges? Uh, no contest. Okay, that's it. You'll be out by tomorrow night, okay? All right, thank you. All right, thank you. 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 Thank you.
All right, so right at the end there, we can see this guy uh, being released from jail. What the court did, what the judge did, was allow him to serve uh, two days as the penalty for his ticket. No fines, no additional court costs. Uh, and allowed the case to be closed, um, which on a ticket that probably would have cost him a few hundred dollars, he exchanged two days of his life in jail for a few hundred dollars. Um, so that's what we saw right at the end there. But I'm going to analyze this back from the beginning. So first of all, this guy, I, I give this sovereign citizen a little bit of credit because he addressed the judge as your honor, and he walked up to the lectern. A lot of them believe that if they walk past a certain boundary in the courtroom and go up to the lectern, uh, that they're giving jurisdiction over to the court. Well, this guy, he at least got that far. That's all baloney, okay? And I'm going to go into that in my book, which I've been working on a lot. I know you guys haven't seen me in as many videos. I still put out a video almost every day, but I've been putting a lot of time in this book, learning a lot about the sovereign citizens myself. Anyway, this guy goes and he walks up to um, the lectern and he addresses the judge as your honor. He showed a degree of respect uh, to the court which would have got him off on the right foot, but he just couldn't. Uh, he just couldn't shut his mouth. Now he does say at a certain point, "What's up? Good morning to the judge." Whoa, whoa, whoa! We all know. You all know. You don't say "What's up" to a judge. You just don't do it. Okay. Even if you have a younger judge, you don't say "What's up." But you know, judges are actually. Uh, they'll usually give a pass to people who aren't there with attorneys. Okay, so he says, I do not understand the nature of the allegations. Um, here's the plain truth, uh, friends, ladies, gentlemen, family. Um, these, the charges are always going to be written down and presented to you in paper form. Like the judge said, he could stand there, he could read them to you, he could read them to this guy right then. All right. Uh, there's nothing. These are allegations. What don't, if you don't understand them just means you don't read English. You don't know English. OK, fair enough. Actually, some people can't read, but the judge will then read it to you. OK. And then if you have some questions, you know, very limited questions that are relevant, they will answer it to you. All right. What this guy is going through is he's at an arraignment. So the judge is just at an arraignment. All that's done is the charges are read to you. The, the factual basis for the charges are read to you, and then the judge sets your bond. This isn't your trial. It's not your opportunity to defend the case. All you can argue is bond, and then you go home, and then you defend the hate the case going forward. These sovereign citizens want to argue the whole case at their arraignment. That's not when it's done. Uh, he jumps right in. I demand a jury trial. I demand a jury trial, and the judge says there's no Nevada jury trials um, for these types of offenses. Now, I didn't never got into exactly what the offense was. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. In, in a reference to a Nevada case, which uh, is very relevant because, you know, states can actually grant more rights than the Constitution, but they can't limit their rights beyond what the Constitution dictates, okay? So, uh, what the Nevada, I, and I read the Nevada, relevant Nevada case here, and what the U.S. Supreme Court has said that uh, that you not you don't have the right to a jury trial for minor and petty offenses. But what does that mean, right? What's a minor and petty offense? Well, I've, anybody could, you know. And this judge didn't get go into much detail on it, and you know I don't blame him. You don't have time to explain. That's why I'm here. Um, I, I, people could defer on what is a minor or petty offense. So the limiting factor here is six months in jail. You have an absolute right to a jury trial under the United States Constitution if you can go to jail for six months or more on an offense. Now, a lot of minor offenses don't carry a penalty of more than six months in jail. And if that's the case, you have the right to a trial, but not a jury trial. That's the law for the United States Supreme Court. That's the law in Pennsylvania. Now, what I meant about the states have to meet that minimum requirement, a state could come forth and say, well, you have to, uh, you get a jury trial for any offense that would, would send you to jail for longer than three months. 
okay? But they couldn't go, if it's six months or more, a state can't alter that. That's U.S. constitutional law, okay? So the state can create greater rights, right? Like, oh, well, the, the U.S. Constitution says six months, we're going to give you jury trial three months or longer. And, and the U.S. Supreme Court will say, that's fine. You can do whatever you want as your state law. OK, but a state couldn't go and say, well, only jury trials at nine months. Uh, uh. The United States Supreme Court says six. OK, so that's the limit. United States pre, you know, Supreme Court and federal law has supremacy over state law. All right. So that's that was the little argument there. That case is Baldwin v. U. North versus New York, 399 U.S. 66, 1970. OK, I'll put a link below. That's a Supreme Court case that talks about what I just talked to you about. So he's just wrong. He's not guaranteed the right to a jury trial. Then he keeps saying, Your Honor, I'm simply trying to grasp an understanding. Well, no, you're not, because like the judge is saying, everything that needs to be done at the arraignment is likely on that piece of paper or is read to you by the judge. Arraignments generally take five minutes, okay? Um, then he refers to him by his name, the name, apparently, I think it's Timothy Cook or something along it. He, he goes, and then you, this is when the sovereign citizen stuff comes out, or he goes, Oh, my, fa my, fa my, my family calls me Timothy as a natural person. Oh, here we go. Here we go. He's got this alternate corporate persona out here. And then this is Timothy, the natural person, right? This is Timothy, the man. And, and you know, not the corporate person that the charges are actually brought against. I didn't do this crime. My corporate uh, clone over there did it. That's basically what the sovereigns want you to believe. Um he starts to question his jurisdiction, and he says, I never signed the contract. Oh, there it is. Another dead giveaway for the sovereign citizens who believe that they can only be held responsible for laws that they've specifically contracted to, okay? That's a totally false uh, legal principle, um, which frankly has never been true uh, probably anywhere in the history of the world, okay? Uh, the government makes the laws, the local polity makes the laws, and they apply to everyone under the jurisdiction of that polity. It doesn't matter whether you contracted to it or not. And I talk about that more in the book. Uh, simply exercising my rights. He's not. He's not exercising. He doesn't, you don't have many rights at an arraignment. There's no rights that he has uh, that he can be exercising there. So that's just, it's just wrong. You exercise certain rights at certain times. Every single right doesn't come into play in every single situation, okay? So this judge, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen in this video. Um, the judge didn't waste a lot of time, and he took him, he took him into custody, charged him, looks like uh, contempt of court, and uh, normally that'd be a three-day sentence, gives him a two-day sentence. And as he's being dragged away, he's saying, no proper due process, no proper due process. Uh, judge continued, in, in, your honor, your honor, uphold the Constitution. He is. Everything that judge is doing um, is totally constitutional under the Nevada state constitution, I would imagine. But it's all it's all correct in Pennsylvania law and under uh, Pennsylvania and or the United States constitution. Um, the judge continued to put on the record the reasons that he was putting this guy in jail. All right. And uh, that's to protect the record, to protect uh, any appeals in case he appeals it. And he can see the reasons that he was put in jail. It's always good to develop a well-rounded uh, record. Everything in court is going to be transcribed or recorded orally so uh, by audio. So you can back up the decisions and the things that were made in the case at that time. Now, it looks like this video uh, flips to a couple days later because the judge talks about it being on Tuesday when he put him in jail. Then we come to Thursday, and uh, it sounds like he's changed his tune. He, oh, he doesn't want one more day in jail. The judge let him out a day early, uh, and, it, and he still says to me, he's still saying this, this crap to me, well, explain that to me, explain that to me. He probably already had it explained to him. Maybe not, maybe not. Um, and, uh, it gave him, you know, basically waived any fines and costs and released him from jail, likely on a contempt of court conviction. Uh, so this judge, uh, he didn't put up with the BS for long, uh, fairly no nonsense judge, not as good as that female judge, uh, who, who popped the sovereign citizen that I did in a video a couple of weeks ago. I mean, she was like, 
that. This judge had a little bit of a longer rope here. Uh, he's getting the message out here. The funny thing is these sovereign citizens that are pulling this and they're putting it on YouTube and now it's on my channel and Van's YouTube. Well, they should know, they should know when they're walking, walking into these situations that they're going to go to jail. All right. That they're going to go to jail when they pull this natural person crap. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm working hard on my book. I have over 10,000 words, all right? I'm covering, I'm trying to cover almost everything about sovereign citizens. I won't get to everything, um, but the book, I'll, uh, as soon as I'm done, you're gonna know, you're gonna see it here on the channel. Um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something, got entertained at the same time. I always love a judge with a quick leash. Um, uh, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Uh, looking to get subscriptions, help get me to 10,000 Common Sense Academy out.